Hi, I'm Gwendolyn Harrett, Product Manager for Content Manager, and I'm going to take you through a typical collaboration use case with Content Manager. So let's say that I'm an employee from an organization collaborating with my colleagues on an application that I know, Microsoft Teams, and I've just received a signed contract from a customer. So I'm going to share the good news with the team. You've done it again, team, here's the new contract. And I'm going to go ahead and upload that contract onto Teams, the signed copy that I just got sent by email. I'm going to post that. And now the post itself, as well as the document and any replies that might be posted, normally should all get checked into Content Manager automatically uh, as part of a schedule that's running in the background. So really, as an end user, I don't have to do any more than that per Content Manager to securely manage my data. But if I wanted to go in and manually check it in, maybe I want to change the classification that this goes into, maybe this is urgent, I can always select my Content Manager add-on. And if I go into the files, I can find the file that I've just uploaded and I can go in and manually check that in myself if I want to as well. And of course, I use check-in styles, which allows me to check in documents much faster because a lot of the mandatory metadata will already have been filled in for me. So because I've chosen contracts, it's already determining what category it will be classified in, what retention schedule will be applied. So the fact that it's got personal data, financial data, the security settings that correspond have all been predetermined. Having said that, I can of course change any of these as well. So I'm gonna alter the title now. And I'm also gonna to decide to input a contract ID as well as a customer name. and I'm simply gonna save that into Content Manager. Oh, it's telling me that I have a mandatory field I haven't filled in, which is author. So for here, I have a lot of shortcuts for searching as well. I'm just gonna add uh, myself as an author to this contract. But of course, I would probably want to add something like the finance team or the customer if I had it in my database. That's all that I have to do now. Um, again, normally would be automatically checked into Content Manager, or I can manually do this small step. Um, and that would be the end of my user journey as a user. So I don't really need to bother with the compliance side. Content Manager does it for me in the back end. However, if I want to continue working on this in Content Manager, maybe I have some more compliance related tasks, I can go and select to view this in the web client. This is going to bring up my contract and I can quickly check whether all the properties have been correctly uh, carried across. So it has declared it as a contract record type with contract corresponding metadata such as retention schedule, security classification, etc. cetera. Um, I could add some properties here. So perhaps I want to add the customer name, for example, just check that that got carried over properly and maybe also the contract ID that I filled in. Um, and I can obviously change where those appear. So maybe uh, the contract customer name is slightly more important for me. And then those values will appear here. So I can check that the name as well as the contract ID. And of course, all of these are searchable. Uh, furthermore, though, perhaps uh, I don't want to be looking into this properties panel, but perhaps here um, I also want to see some of those reflected. So what I'm going to do is within the actual grid view, I'm also going to add customer name here as something that I want to use uh, when filtering my information. So there it is. Uh, maybe I don't want it at the very back there. So maybe I will select that and drag it across here. There we go. So of course, uh, if I was another user perhaps, or I come back later and I wanna search for this document, I would quickly use this search bar up here. So I could very much um, just search for Flexi. Um, it's gonna search for uh, Flexi related documents. Um, if I want to specify that I'm looking for documents with the word Flexi in the title, for example, um, I can do that. And of course, I can use advanced searching as well. 
So if I want to build a slightly more complex search, let's say that I want to filter by record type and say that I'm only interested in actual contracts. So I can actually put that in um, and say that I'm looking for contract record types. I can add that. Um, I can also say, again, we could use the contract ID, for example. That might be something that realistically I would be searching for. Um, and of course, um, any search clause I can click on, I can have it be not flexi. Um, so it can be that value or not that value. Of course, I could change to or, etc. cetera. Um, and then I can run this search um, and equally find uh, results. So all of this um, is how later on I could find this or any other users could come and find that contract to work on as well. Of course, I could choose to browse uh, for the data. So here I've got my browsing panel. And if I know that it's in contracts, for example, I could go select here. So here we are. Grid view comes in really useful for viewing bulk documentation. And of course, that customer name, I can see a lot of my contracts are with this customer. They're obviously a big, important customer that I've got here. Um, but I can use these values. I can filter on them. Um, so obviously I could use date, for example, to say, show me the oldest or the most recent. Um, and then as we saw, I can change, of course, the values of these columns as well. So if I wanted to add a contract, I'm not restricted to the Teams integration, of course. Most data added into CM will be bulk added, um, but I can also directly from the interface add something into the uh, contract category from here. Um, so let's add uh, my Flexi unsigned. Uh, this will be, I'm working on a draft version, so let's use the same metadata. Um, again, that author mandatory, so let's fill that in. And really what I can do here, I could either drag and drop or I could click. Um, let's upload the unsigned version and let's add that. Okay, so the unsigned now um, has been added and I can see that document here. So let's say that this was a draft version. What would I want to do? Well, I'd want to view this document possibly. So why is this a draft? Because it's missing a signature in this case. I could download a copy. I could share this URL for collaboration. So here I just want you to notice that we've only got one version of the document so far. Um, and if I were to select and uh, look at the properties, for example, we would see revision number one. So what happens if I want to collaborate on this? Again, um, maybe using the tools that I'm familiar with. So OneDrive, I want to check this out and collaborate with uh, my colleagues on this as well. I can just check out the document to OneDrive. That's not a problem. And then once I've checked this out to OneDrive, I can essentially um, you know, share the document, for example, which is what I'm likely to do. So, um, so this is typical OneDrive functionality. Um, please work with me on this. Send that off. Um, and then essentially I can start modifying this. So perhaps I want to sign it. Michael F. Um, perhaps I want to add a new clause, etc. So I can do those modifications. What we also have here, as with everywhere in Microsoft 365, another content manager add-on. So I can actually see some of the CM specific metadata, um, such as, you know, again, the retention schedule that's applied to this as I'm working on this. So even if Raul came in, he could see this information as well. I can add any properties here. And I've got something uh, special as well, which is the context pane. So here um, I can do a variety of things. There's a whole load of actions here that I can take, but I'm going to go with show me items that are in the same category. So for example, I could see other contracts. I could find another draft. Maybe I want to access this. What I could do is select this draft. And for example, one of the actions I could take from the menu is to add um, a relationship. And I could say that it's related to this draft copy. And then so now when I come into properties, um, if I add related record, 
I can now see that draft document has been linked to this document as well. So I've done all my changes, that's been saved. Um, so I can actually quite easily just close that, um, go back into Content Manager. Um, I do actually have an option where just closing it would check it back in. I've disabled that here for demo purposes. So I'm checking this back in manually. I've done my changes. I can discard any changes I've made or I can make a revision. I can say um, have added signature could be a new clause, could be whatever change I want to do. And I want to check that back in to CM. So that's what I'm going to do. And then um, if I select that document again, this time I'll be able to see that signature and I'll even be able to see the previous version without the signature here. So it's really keeping track of all versions of that document. So here, um, other actions that I might want to do, I might want to add this to my favorites if it's something that I'm going to be collaborating on a lot. And then again, that just means that when I'm in my shortcuts, if I go into my favorite records, um, then that contract is going to appear there now. Um, maybe I actually want to update the title now that that has been signed. So now I'm going to say my flexi final and I'm going to save that. Another thing that I might want to do, so now that I've renamed that my Flexi Final, is uh, possibly I could want to change the security settings on this. Now that it's final, maybe um, only the finance team can now access this because it's got quite confidential information. Um, so here I can see, for example, financial data. Uh, I might want to change so that uh, whoever can view this document is now private or I could even customize that and choose specific users, for example, and say that only those users, so maybe myself and Raul, um, can now access this document and I've changed those security settings here as well. So this was a typical collaboration scenario. Another way in which as a user I can easily work within this uh, web interface is by using concept of user labels. So I can also add user labels to any information, anything I'm working on. Um, so here I've got a previous contract and I even have my urgent due items. So this is unrelated. I've got my pipeline for the first quarter of next year. It's an estimate and actually what I need to do is send that to my manager for approval. So I'm going to select the approved sales pipeline workflow, which is going to attach that Excel, send it over to my manager. So now if I were to log back in as that manager, so for this demo, I'm an administrator. I can see this um, in real life. This would be a separate user. I would come in I would find this sales manager approves has been assigned to me as the manager. I can go through, look at the attachments. So look at, for example, the Excel that's been sent, review that, say that that pipeline looks pretty good. Um, I could even add some comments in the notes if I wanted to. And then I'm basically going to simply approve this. And what it will do is move it on to the next level. So this would be a different uh, level two supervisor that has to log in and then run approval level two. Um, again, I can always undo a step um, with a valid reason, though. Um, I made a mistake. And then I can basically uh, reassign that task also if I feel that another user would be more appropriate uh, than myself. So this is how workflow would also run in Content Manager. And that ends our collaboration demo using the CM Microsoft 365 integration and the modern web interface. Hope you enjoyed it.